Hey everyone, S Dub Nation here, and welcome back to a brand new Arrowverse video here on the channel. I like to stop and take the time to rank every Arrowverse hero ranked from worst to best. Well, actually, I did not do every Arrowverse hero. I did all six main Arrowverse heroes, so I only did the six main ones: Black Lightning, Batwoman, etc. You'll see them on this list, or you could just check the description for the heroes that I am ranking. Please note that everything I say in this video is just my very own opinion. My list is certainly not the right list. It is just my list and you are free to comment down below your ranking of all Arrowverse heroes or you could just do the six main ones. Like, comment, and subscribe and without further ado, let's get into the ranking. Kicking off my list at number six, we have Batwoman. Now Batwoman, the show, actually had a lot of potential going into season two from season one because it actually focused more on Kate Kane post-crisis. But pre-crisis, it was just all over the place. It was trying to find its fitting in this world that was about to be post Arrow because Arrow was ending and it was trying so much to be just like that. Trying to be feminist, trying to be gay rights. It's, I, I get it. I mean, representation is important. But at the end of the day, when you have your TV show say lines like the bat suit will be perfect if it fits a woman or I'm not going to let a man take you credit for a woman's work i guess in context on paper that sounds more empowering but when it comes out of the mouth of kate kane ruby rose especially it just sounds cringy and really not at all empowering to me i just find it you know like deep depowering the men i mean there are mostly men that are watching these superhero shows and when you target your audience more towards women not a lot of men are going to watch that show and you're going to be losing viewers. So that's what I think post-crisis post -crisis focused on more was because it focused more on the action, more on Alice, more on the villain, more on the story and less on lesbians and less on gay rights and stuff like that. It really didn't focus on that stuff pre-crisis did. So that's what I really like. But also, I think that Batwoman actually works better in ensembles. I don't think that she could really lead her own show. She has potential. Her show had potential. Her character had potential if the directors just gave her a little bit more of a push. A little bit more. Just something to Ruby Rose. Give something to Ruby Rose. The fans give something to Ruby Rose so that she can keep doing the show and keep doing what she loved. Because apparently she loved this character, but she just couldn't take the, the backlash and stuff like that. And I get it. That messes with your mental ill like that messes with your with your mental stability. And also the fact that she almost got paralyzed. And also the fact that a lot of fans were hating on her show. A lot of fans were hating on her character when she led her own show. And I felt like that was wrong as as us fans to do that. But then again, she did steal all of her cousin's gadgets and gear and and his his secret hideout, his headquarters and his equipment and his technology and called it hers and say she's not about to let a man takes credit for a woman's work. Even though she took all of his stuff all of his tricks and toys but anyway that's that's besides the point i just think that she works better in elseworlds and crisis because she didn't lead her own thing and ruby rose mainly get casted in side character roles so her being a side character in the crossovers she worked a whole lot better and i think just like i said before she had potential to be one of the best characters kicking off my top five list is black lightning now black lightning is actually very interesting because at the beginning of his show He's an educator, you know, he's a father, he's a husband. I like that aspect. He's a family man, and he's a retired superhero. So when he actually dons on the new suit and goes back into action, you feel that. You feel that empowerment because he's actually been gone for so long, and he's actually been holding back his powers, holding back from police brutality and everything like that, holding back from gang members and stuff. I just love that aspect of him coming back into the light as a superhero, and I think it works perfectly well here. I love the fact that he is pretty smart. Jefferson Pierce is pretty smart. He quotes so many things from like Dr. King or Malcolm X and stuff like that, mainly because he is an educator, and I love that aspect. And it's very empowering to see a black superhero on TV that's probably even better than Luke Cage. I think this show is better than Luke Cage. It's probably not better than Black Lightning, but it's definitely better than Luke Cage. And this character is definitely better than Luke Cage. I think he does a lot more to the for the community and for the kids of the community due to him being an educator. Coming in at number four is the White Canary. Now, Sarah is so cool of a character, not because she's hot. I mean, she is hot. I 
she she is pretty pretty but i i think she is a great character because she has so much history behind her with her relationship with oliver and everything like that and i wish i could put her character up higher but i just felt like from her from black canary her black canary storyline was so cool like she was this assassin she came back to kill people just like oliver did same thing of oliver just a female version and i think what Batwoman does wrong when she says that she's a when he said that she's a female Bruce Wayne I think they did that right with saying that she is a female Oliver Queen because she basically is and when she dons on the white canary costume and she tries to change her life and everything like that she's trying to go around you know try to do things more try to save more people and then she gets this opportunity to become a legend to become something more and even though the CW and the Arrowverse are actually trying to get rid of this character, they actually made her into one of the most captivating characters inside of DC Legends. And then, why she said in Crisis? I was an assassin. I was dead. And now I'm the captain of a freaking time ship. One thing remains the same. I'm still a sore loser. I love the fact that Sarah actually opens up the Barry in that scene because it shows that Oliver Queen was the only tie to her past life. Without Oliver Queen, only peop the only way people know Sarah Lance is just from this assassin. It's just from this captain of the time ship, something like that. Oliver Queen was the only one that knew Sarah Lance before she got on the yacht. And I love that aspect. And I love the fact that Oliver Queen and Sarah Lance have such a great relationship. But the only reason why Sarah Lance is down a little bit because... I want to see more of her character thrive in Legends. They gave her powers in Legends and really didn't know what to do with it. And she also was pushed onto Legends because they really didn't know what to do with that character. So I want to see more of her potential. Before I get into my top three, I'd like to take the time to say that if you are a fan of the Arrowverse, which you probably are, that's why you're watching this video. Click that playlist up above for everything Arrowverse related that I have on my channel. Also, if you are a fan of the MCU, I am doing an MCU rewatch on my podcast, The Regular Podcast, and that link will be down in the description below and in the comment section. Without further ado, let's get into my top three. Kicking off my top three list is Supergirl. Now, Supergirl is a great character. I think she is very well done. I think she is actually the one main consistent throughout the entire seasons. Maybe except season three. Maybe at the start of season three, I liked her character a little bit more because it showed that Kara actually has the ability to actually get mad and you know get sad and get angry and stuff like that we knew she we knew that she can get mad or angry and stuff like that but not to this capacity and i love that aspect i love the fact that Kara actually stays hopeful throughout the entire seasons and like all of the seasons she's hopeful and i love that she's she smiles through everything she has a bright smile she's just like superman just a female version and i love the fact that her show actually is the basis for representation because it shows that Women actually are strong, and Supergirl is a strong woman. You don't have to be a feminist for that. So we see that she's actually vulnerable. She can get beat up at any time. Lex can kill her. Rain can kill her. A lot of things can kill Supergirl, and it shows the vulnerability in her, and I love that. And she would do anything to protect people. The one episode that I really love in Supergirl was the ep in, season in season one. Season one is the best Supergirl season try to change my mind try to change my mind i dare you but i i think that in that episode when supergirl lost her powers and she went inside of that store and she actually you know she actually talked the robber down into giving her the gun i loved that scene because it showed that she was scared her hand was trembling but it showed that no matter if she was powerless or not she still was going to stand up to evil and try to talk them down and stay hopeful at all times and that's what i love to see in supergirl and that's what i also love to see in superman so i think those have a nice two contrast together and supergirl never she never loses hope she did lose she did lose a little bit of hope in crisis but thanks to oliver queen she got it back and she stayed hopeful throughout that entire throughout that entire last half of crisis and the entire half half of her season i think she lost some of her powers in season five and in the last half of season five i really don't remember that season but i do love the fact that Kara is hopeful she is bright she is bubbly she's 
fun. She's excited. She's just super. And it also helps that she inspires hope and inspires people to be something more and inspires people to be nothing less but themselves. Our runner-up at number two is The Flash. Now, The Flash actually has a fascinating storyline. I love the fact that nobody believed him about the man in the yellow suit. And when they were proven wrong, he got his dad out of prison. And then his dad died. And then his mom became the Speed Force. And then his mom died because the Speed Force died due to crisis. I, I just love that everyone that Barry meets in his life dies or has betrayed him. And that's a great character arc. And I guess, you know... You could say that, you know, he that's the reason why he locked up Nora. But, I mean, come on, dude. That's your daughter. That kind of turned my head from Flash. But, all in all, Flash is an excellent character and deserves the number two spot. But, I don't think he's the best character. I mean, don't get me wrong. He is an amazing character. I just feel like in some seasons and in some episodes, everyone around him kind of forgets that he has certain powers. Like, Flash time. He, he could have easily stopped Cicada for like while using flash time i mean him and nora could have went in flash time destroyed cicada destroyed his dagger end of the season but instead they have to make this long 22 story arc with flash the flash not being fast enough to catch a a guy that jumps super high with a dagger i really don't get it the guy that can travel through alternate universes in a blink of an eye can't catch somebody that can just jump up into the sky with a magic dagger i don't get that aspect and also barry needs a pep talk after every time he loses a fight he needs a pep talk and then he needs cisco to tell him what to do and i think he worked he works a lot better when he figures out things on his own due to the fact that he has super speed i think if he figured out things on his own a little bit more i feel like he could have been a greater character than he already is He's a great character. He's an extraordinary character. Just coming in at number two. But coming in at my number one has got to go to the Green Arrow. I think this is just a fascinating character to start the Arrowverse with, hence the name. Because I think that from the start, he was just this vigilante guy coming back to save his city. And that's all he wanted to do. So he was going out at night killing people with a bow and arrow. And then he learned that killing people is wrong. For, so from season two all the way to season four until he kills Damian Dart, he gets that he gets that feel again. He gets that rush to kill again. So then in season five, that's the whole main story arc that he loves to kill, that he wants to kill. So that they actually make him confess to himself that he loves to kill. They actually make Oliver Queen confess that he actually loves to kill and that he loved the rush of killing. And he does. He said himself. He wants to kill and he loves it because that's all he known. All he known is darkness because that's his true self. From being away from five years, from five years to going to Hong Kong and staying on Lian Yu and going to Russia, that's all he known is just to survive and fight and kill. So when he comes back with that same mindset, that's all he's known and his true self is darkness. That's why he sacrifices himself for Barry and, and Kara because he feels that they inspire hope and they inspire us to be our true selves and they are the best of of all of us because oliver is filled with darkness he has a lot of dark tendencies so he gave so he's given up everything he's given up his wife he's given up his daughter his son just to save these two people so then they can save the universe and when he does help the monitor you know he does die the first time in crisis it's a little bit emotional it's all right and then he dies the second time when he turned into a specter it's a little bit emotional, so it's all right. But you do feel the emotion nonetheless because he's actually at peace and he finally gets rid of that darkness. So Oliver Queen does not fail his city and he definitely does not fail his universe. All right, guys, that is it for the ranking. Please know that everything I say in this video is just my very own opinion. My list is certainly not the right list. It was just my list. And you are free to comment down below your ranking of every Arrowverse hero. I only did the main six because I like those main six. It reminds me of the Avengers. So those main six. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.